Here we have a fully restored 1902 Oldsmobile Curve Dash Olds. Restored by Reinhold's Restorations. Everything was done in house. Go over here, what we had to do, change and fix. The car came from, to us from another restoration shop. So, it's kind of difficult not having a full car to go off of from the start. But, uh, the wood, woodwork all was, it was pretty bad when it came to us, so Richard Reinhold did all the woodwork, fixed that. The uh, paint was all done in house by Rick Reinhold. All the body work was done by Ben Reinhold. Sanding, prep work, all that. All the pinstriping was done by Jim Reinhold. The engine work, all that. We respoke the wheels and trued those up. Fender brackets. They were missing when it came to us, so we kind of went off pictures and whatever we could find to get that all bent and made up. Go over here to the engine. And right here. You can see like huge flywheels, like 130 pounds, I believe. And here you have your ignition or your transmission. And this is your shifter. All the way forward is high. Then you come back for neutral. Then low. And all the way back is reverse. And you can see in there how it all moves. And here is your oil system. We didn't have a hydraulic pump or any kind of oiling system other than a, a drip that dropped down onto your rod and bearings as it spins around. And here's your switch for on and off. Turn your all wheel drip on and oil drip off. And this is your carburetor adjustment, which since we don't have the original, we just have there as a dummy. We don't have the original carburetor on there. And uh, that's your ignition and spark advance and retard. You have your levers over here for both of those. We were having problems. The engine vibrates so bad, it was giving an inconsistent ignition on and off. It would bounce around so much. So we bypassed that to a regular switch down under here, under in this box. It's hit away, but still easy to get to. And then uh, you have your oil can down in here because your transmission here set up needs oil constantly. It gets real loud and chatters if it's not oiled properly. There's little holes in the sides of those discs to oil the planetary gears inside of them. And we'll go over to this side. Here's your battery, run your ignition and your and your uh, coil, it's a Model T coil. And then up under here, got a little box and in there is where the switch is, the ignition switch and then whatever tool you want to put in there. And this here is your compression release. You hold that in while starting to release the pressure from the engine so it's not so hard to crank this. Here's your starter. Crank this around. Brake and gas pedal. And your steering tiller. Upholstery work was all done by Helen Reinhold. The top, all, everything. We have the seat off inside. Here's the engine. We're having a bit of a problem with it overheating. It seems like these cars had a problem with it to begin with, but with the added power of the other, this is a Model T carburetor, Holly carburetor. We made an adapter there to go to that since we didn't have the original carburetor. 
your gas tank, your coolant reservoir, and your muffler. Uh, the problem with the it overheating, we we the the way the cooling setup is is the water comes from the tank straight down through here, and the other fitting at the bottom of the engine is right under the bottom of this. So your head really isn't getting enough flow through it. There's nothing to force the water through the head and then back down. So all of it's just going straight through the reservoir, through here and down through. When we run it, we're taking temperature readings here, which is nice and cool. But then at your head where you can tell there's no not enough water flow, it's just really hot over in this side especially. Once it starts to heat up, it just doesn't want to run. And if you richen up your mixture a lot, it'll run more, but then it'll eventually cut off. So, and the problem with this here, this setup here is you have to three three spots to seal. You have your combustion chamber, you got your outside here, and then you got your back part here. There's a lot there to make sure you have sealed up. And then we put wrap on the exhaust which to try and keep the heat away from all the paint and everything in here but it seemed to exacerbate the overheating problem because it just kept the heat in here instead of radiating the heat out so we took that back off and it seemed to make it a little bit better but still having a little problems with that the uh, chain here we actually found from a guy over in England that reprodu reproduced these chains, these are special chains only used in a few years here. They're easily taken apart by pushing these together, but by keeping them tight, keeps it all together and it won't fall apart. And then we have the rear here, which, like I said, it all came in pieces, which we had different stuff, hard time getting that back together, but it all runs and drives. A little walk around the whole car. little holder there of anything you want or they made kits to cover this whole area in that you can use to put in there rain snow whatever you were going through we found this floor mat here from a member of the curve dash holes club that made some reproductions of them We had seen some uh, the way the guy, other guys were fixing this is they put some ports right here where they fo were forcing the water to come through the head and they ran that down instead of having your intake up here. It seemed to fix the problem. But keeping this as a national winner, which the owner wants to do, you would see that and they would dock points for something like that. So here you have 1902 Curved Dash Oles fully restored.